going on guys? Church here. Today I'm going to break down the beat for Jay Foster, Talk To Me. So this particular song really just came about uh, in the last couple months actually. Really uh, probably the end of December is when this whole thing kind of started going. But I'm going to backtrack a little bit to how this whole uh, relationship between me and Jeremy kind of began. So I think it was January or maybe February of 2020. So you're looking at probably a little over a year ago now. Um, I found his music on Instagram. You know, you've heard that probably in the majority of these videos that I find people on Instagram. Because right now Instagram is like the way to find people as far as the social media platforms go. I'd consider it probably the best way to find, you know, people to work with and connect with. Um, so I saw this, you know, this singer from Chicago, and I was just checking out uh, his music and everything, and, uh, you know, he reminded me of, some of you know, like an Usher or a Neo, obviously people he said he's been compared to, but even before I knew all of that, that he, like, had been already compared to them, I thought that myself, and it reminded me of, you know, growing up uh, around the early, or the late 2000s into the early 2010s, where R&B was kind of taking like a new direction and there was a lot of different artists like Trey Songs and a lot of other people kind of coming out at that time. Um, and it really just had a lot of energy and his voice was just incredible. And I'm like, how is this dude not like huge already? Because this guy, it was just, his vocal range is absurd. And um, I was already trying to, you know, work with more R&B people because I hadn't really, uh, at the time, um, got into working with R&B artists so I reached out to him and I think he responded pretty quick probably in like a day or so and was just like yeah I'm looking for producers and I'm looking for people to connect with and uh kind of start building something out because uh, I think he was getting his team together at that time like I said I think he had um he had just released his second EP uh at the top of 2019 and um that was the one that I heard, and then I went back and checked out his back catalog and everything. Uh, but so from there, you know, I was like, yeah, man, I'm just going to start sending you ideas constantly. So pretty much from then on out, I just all of last year just sent so many ideas. Um, didn't didn't hear back on a ton of the ideas, but I was just like, I got to have a song with this dude. Like, I, I got to, I was just dead set. I was like, somehow I got to get at least one record with this dude. So, you know, October comes, uh, we've, we've been, you know, going back and forth on some things. He'll, every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, I like this. Uh, you know, we might change some things here, whatever, whatever. Nothing really happened that much. Um, I had him on the Proven Knowledge podcast. Um, as some of you might know, if you follow the podcast, he was on, I think, the end of October, actually. Uh, and then off, you know, off the, uh, interview itself we started talking more about you know the songs I was sending and everything and um, uh, I think he was starting to take a liking to like where I was at with the songs I think it took me a minute to kind of get it to where I knew what sound he was going for a little bit and he would kind of give me you know feedback and everything and um, you know from the interview I got his like phone number and everything and we exchanged contacts and whatnot and just kept working back and forth and then fast forward to December and he hit me up he's like yo I got like a couple of these songs I really enjoy a couple of these beats you got here um, and we're gonna get to work now it kind of took a few weeks because I think he had some other stuff going on in his life and you know I, I totally understand because I kind of just as a producer you know I'm working with a lot of people so I, I kind of just sit back and wait sometimes and you know, you, you got to let things happen in their own time. So I wasn't going to rush anything, but I was like, okay, this is kind of, you know, we're making some progress here. Um, he says he likes a couple, you know, ones he wants to uh, go into more detail on them. And then uh, new, it was after New Year's. It was probably like the first actual week of January this year. So not too long ago from where we're at right now. Uh, we finally like hopped on FaceTime and he was telling me about this beat for Talk To Me. And he's like, yeah, man, I already got a whole song written. I already recorded the rough draft. And I was, like, blown away because I expected him to be like, okay, we got to do this, this, and this, and then 
I think I want to record something. But no, he was like, no, I already recorded a whole song to it. And, you know, it's all it really needs now is like a legit uh, mix and master. So that kind of threw me like for a surprise. I was like, holy shit. Like, so he's, he's actually like legitimately seriously enjoying the song and everything. Um, and I'm always open to, you know, changes in the beat and whatnot. And I did have one more sound in this thing. This thing is a three track. So I had four tracks in there. I had like a part toward like, I think the middle of the song that was kind of like a synth thing. He just wanted that taken out. Cause I feel like, and I, and I totally get what he was saying. Cause it kind of threw the, I don't know. It didn't really throw like the vocals off, but it kind of like made it harder for him. I think to lay the vocals down the way he wanted to. So I was like, yeah, we're going to, we'll take that out. I will, I don't even care. Cause I, I thought the majority of the song that actually needed to be there was perfect. Um, so I'm going to show you, you know, what happened, uh, and how, you know, this came together, but it's a three track. So I'll, I'll kind of explain the different parts here. So you got this, you got this kind of like pad thing going. Uh, it's called the sunset pad. Um, this reminded me of some like 1980s like uh, chords, kind of the way like um, I don't know if like a Prince song or you know maybe a Michael Jackson song, like a slower song would start out. So it already kind of had that vibe to me of like I could hear a singer on this definitely. Like it wasn't a hip hop like feel to me at all. So I'll play you that real quick just by itself. <laughs> So that was like a little bit more sped up than that. I actually like half timed it and just made it very like slow. And my envision, I envisioned from there, I was like, okay, I gotta have some drums on this thing. So uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this in other videos yet, but I have, I was listening to Ill Mind's pod, Ill Mind's a dope producer, by the way, look him up. Um, he's got like a podcast right now where he's interviewing different uh, producers and I think engineers and some other people too. Uh, and he had one with S1 who made, you know, Kanye's Power, Guilt Trip, uh, did, did some songs for Eminem. He's a really dope producer as well. Um, uh, S1 on that podcast talked about how he started doing his... Actually, no, I, I lied. It wasn't Ill Mind. It was uh, Bink's podcast. I apologize. It was Bink and S1. But anyway, the long story short, uh, S1 was telling Bink, or maybe Bink was telling S1 that he started... When he would send these songs off to be mixed, uh, he would put all the drums on one track instead of just having them separated because, you know, if, especially if they were like loop, even if they weren't loops, like he would just get the mix right and make it so the drums just hit the way he wanted to and everything. So I kind of started doing that with some other uh, drums of mine. So that's what I did on this song. I kind of just kept everything on one track. So it would kind of just sit where I wanted to. And I like the way the snare is pretty dry. Like, I'll play it and you'll hear it. Uh, but the kick just has the nice punch to it that I really enjoy. So this is what you got for the drums for this one. So very, you know, simple. Uh, open hi-hat, you got the normal hi-hat that's kind of more of a live percussion that's like almost at a stutter. It's kind of got the stutter effect, but not the way like a trap song would do it, more like how just an old school, you know, record would do it. Um, and then just your kick and snare. So like I said, I kind of just wanted that to be how it already was because I felt like it just was kind of more natural and not like... Um, fabricated I guess if that makes any sense uh and some of the records that other songs that we've been kind of going back and forth on me and Jeremy he said he you know likes trap type um 
drums. These are more, honestly, to me, like old school drums. Like, if you sped these up, you could probably put them in like a boom bap uh, type of song. Like, almost like a, like a J. Dilla type beat or something. Uh, but the only other sound that's in this is this last one. Let me see what it's called real quick. It's another, like, background element. Let's see. Rudy Chill, I think, is the name of it. But this one just kind of moves, you know, the song along a little bit. It just kind of comes in. And you'll hear it uh, almost, I think it comes in at the pre-chorus and then obviously during the actual uh, chorus itself. It's almost like a sweep too, like have you ever heard a sweep on, um, I don't know what VSTs or plugins, but it just kind of like sits in the background. And then that just replays the whole time. And then, I don't know why my, actually it does, my session has the, uh, the crash as well that transitions from the, you know, the pre-chorus to, or the hook to the chorus, you, you'll get it. You, when you hear the song, you'll understand what I'm saying, but I'll play you uh, that part as well. But this is exact, this is what it's going to sound like with everything together, so this is, uh, this is all we got right here. See, it's just a crash, like, transition. Simple. It's in a million records, so... So, yeah, I mean, you know, another three-track uh, song or a very, you know, stripped down song, but it gets the job done. And we had that discussion, me and Jeremy, uh, kind of over the phone about how, you know, songs are getting shorter, songs are getting more simplified. It's just kind of where things are moving. Um, so this is another great record. Like I said, I, I honestly feel like I put so much energy into just getting like one song with Jeremy. So hopefully we could do more. Um, you know, he's a great artist, a great guy to work with. Uh, and I'm really happy with how this song came out and I'm, you know, very fortunate to be, have made this EP and everything and I know he's got more stuff in the works and me and him have some, like I said, some other songs uh, that we've been getting going so, you know, hopefully um, something cool can happen again but I'm just really proud of this one and, uh, you know, hats off to Jeremy, man. You're, you're a great artist and, um, you know, everyone should go check him out. J. Foster on all streaming platforms. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to doing more R&B records because this is, when I stopped and I thought about it, I was like, I've done a lot of pop and I've done a lot of hip hop, but I haven't really done like traditional R&B yet until now. I feel like this is probably one of the first songs I've done that's like traditional R&B. So yeah, I mean, that is Talk To Me. It's produced by me, by Jay Foster. It's out now. His new EP, Me And You, is out now on all platforms. I'll probably put it in the description of the video. So yeah. Till next time. Thanks, guys. Talk to me, talk to me. I know you want to talk to me, talk to me. Do you want to talk to me, talk to me?